Last time I was trying to get font parsing working with STB true type, but I hit a hard limit of that library and I didn't manage to finish. So this time I'm pulling out the big guns with the free type library. As before, the goal is to make a code path that extracts all of the data that I need and then can be done with the library. The data I need are a glyph atlas, glyph metrics, and a map that takes code points to glyph indexes. Let's see how this goes. Last time I ended up pretty happy that I had everything in a scratch program. That saved me from having to revert any of my work and it kept my code base in good condition. So I'm doing the same thing again here by setting up a scratch program file called libfreetype scratch cpp. Next, I need to download and set up the library. Unfortunately, the free type library is a really heavyweight library compared to the, free, the STB library that we tried last time, which was a single header. Free type is decked out with all the features for parsing all sorts of font file types, multiple rasterization paths for plane and subpixel anti-aliasing and assigned distance field renderer as well. It has compressors and decompressors, headers for configuring the build, build scripts for dozens of combinations of build systems and compilers. It's got documentation, it's got testing. It just has all the bells and whistles. Out of curiosity, I decided to run count lines of code on this library, and you can see the results right here. It's unfortunate that I'm jumping from something so simple all the way up to something so complicated. Maybe I can put on my to-do list to synthesize a more medium weight library from SCB TrueType and FreeType, but for now, I'm just gonna have to wrangle this beast. The library comes with a few files documenting how to build from source. Doing this will allow me to build a version that is trimmed down to only the features I'm actually using, which will cut down on the bloat that ends up in my final executable. So to do this build from source, I set up a new batch script and start building the library tailored to my needs.
Here I finally managed to build my Scratch program and link it with the free type lib file. Getting this to work is quite a big task, and I'm not going to go over all of it, but I'll quickly point out a few reasons why it's so hard so that the braver audience members can try it out for themselves. My build script and configuration headers will be available the next time I do a public version of the repository, so you can keep an eye out for that if you want to skip to having my particular configuration working. For now, here are the broad stroke details. One, you have to select a set of C files to build from the library. And there are sort of complex relationships in the dependencies between these, and a few rules about what makes a given set of files valid or not. First, there's a set of required base files. You have to at least have one font driver file. Font drivers are the parsers, so there's one for each format that the library supports. Some font drivers have dependencies on other supporting C files, so you have to get those too. To get true type working, I needed the files true type slash true type dot C, SFNT slash SFNT dot C, and PS names slash PS names dot C. With that, you can look at glyph metrics and the raw geometry from a font file, but you can't render it yet. If you want to render it, you need to add a renderer file. I use the smooth slash smooth.c renderer, which provides rasterization with anti-aliasing. It supports both sub-pixel anti-aliasing and regular pixel-aligned anti-aliasing. Two, you need to make a modified version of ftmodule.h and comment out the modules you don't want to use. This kind of matches the C files, so you need to go and look at which C files are paired up with which modules and make them agree with each other. Three, you need to make a modified version of ftoption.h and change the options there as you see fit. Again, this controls certain things that will also relate to the modules, so you'll need to read through them carefully and see which ones you can actually get given the modules you have, and also within the modules you have, things like subpixel anti-aliasing that I don't want to use can be disabled here. Four, you need to make a modified version of ft2build.h and define macros that point to the other two configuration files. Five, you have to configure your build line so that it includes paths to the custom build files you created in steps two through four. And the libraries include paths for finding all of the headers that are for free type itself. And then you need to add the macro ft2 build library to the preprocessor so that the library knows it's being built in library mode. This affects a few things about how identifiers and errors and stuff get declared. In other modes, they have different names for testing or something like that. With that part working, now it's just a matter of getting familiar with the FreeType API and figuring out how to solve my original problem, which is extracting all the data I need from the TTF file. The API has its ups and downs, but the documentation is pretty helpful, and I don't think there's a lot for me to add there. If you want to make your own free type based font rendering, I would recommend just going through the documentation and putting it together the way you need it. I want to stop here for a minute because we can see here what it looks like when an API gives me a way to comprehend the map. 
So on the left, you can see the output. There are these pairs of key and value that are printed to the standard out, and they show me the whole map. On the right, I have the loop that gets this data. And this one features the whole reason I had to abandon the stb true type library and switch to this whole massive free type wrangling session. With this data, I can now build my own accelerated map, and I can do that by just looking at the pairs that the font actually supports, rather than having to ask for every single code point ever, what is this map to, and then build a map out of that. Hopefully you can see how this is a lot more convenient and there's no substitute for this when all you can do is the direct accelerated map function. Okay, now all that's left to do is to figure out how to extract some rasterization and metrics for all the glyphs and we'll be done. And here's the epic conclusion for today. I can't visualize glyph data yet because I'm just in a scratch program, but I can inspect it in Remedy and it looks like what I would expect from a rasterized glyph. So that's pretty good progress. So far, I know how to parse font data and get what I need out, but I don't have a plan for how I want to organize that data to pass it to the renderer. So that's what we'll be looking at next time. See you then.